Today we're gonna to build this dream closet makeover on a budget. First thing we gotta do is unload everything out of the closet or unpack it. It is packed in there. So we just started pulling everything out so we could actually get to the shell of the closet to know what we were gonna do. Next, Miss 731 started designing the closet the way she wanted it. And I let her go because she is a master designer. She pointed me in the right direction, gave me my marching orders, and I went to work. First thing we gotta do is remove these budget wire shelves out of the closet and they're just screwed in. A lot of times they have drywall anchors in the wall you have to remove, and so we did all of that first. Then I removed all the baseboards from around the floor. This 731 followed up by putting all of the holes the drywall anchors left. While we had everything out and all the holes putty, we just started painting. Actually, Miss 731 and my oldest son, Dylan, painted as well, but I'm the only one on camera. Painted the ceiling, the walls, everything. Next, it's time to start building the custom built-ins. This is just three quarter inch sanded birch plywood you can buy it at your local home store. First thing I wanted to do is lay out the height, which was seven feet. And then I took my track saw and made this cut. Now, if you don't have a track saw, you can use a circular saw and a straight edge or even the Craig rip cut is a good option. I also used my table saw for those long cuts. Some of the longer cross cuts I was able to do with the Craig track saw. And then the smaller ones, I just used my miter saw to make those cross cuts. First thing I wanted to do is actually make the bottom piece or the bottom shelf. I wanted to put in a three inch toe kick, three inches in, three inches tall. So I measured and laid that out. Then I used my mask of pocket hole jig to drill all of the pocket holes for the joinery on this project. This is by far my favorite pocket hole jig I've ever used. It's the Masca M2, today's sponsor. Pocket hole joinery makes joining wood together very fast, very strong. It's very approachable for you to tackle DIY projects like this. For the toe kick, I just used some wood glue and then screwed it in with inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. As a matter of fact, all screws used in this project today are inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. I then screwed the bottom shelf to the seven foot upright we cut earlier. For the middle shelf, I just measured about halfway distance. I then used one of my three inch wide strips to attach to the back of the cabinet. This will be used as a support for the middle shelf. And the middle shelf will lay on top of that support. You'll glue and screw it to the side of the plywood. I just used brad nails to attach the shelf to the support. It was at this point, Miss 731 informed me that this would not fit through the doors. So we actually took everything apart and then I had to redesign it. Yeah, I thought I died. So what I did was I put three inch strip on the bottom to support the side of the bottom shelves. And then we brought all the pieces in individually. Here you see the bottom shelf with the toe kick already attached. Now you use wood glue and brad nails to hold this in place. It'll be plenty strong for the bottom shelf. For the top and middle support, we're gonna install those in place using inch and a quarter pocket hole screws from the back so that when it's slid against the wall, you don't see the pocket hole. Don't be afraid to use that wood glue. That's gonna add extra support. Also the back brace gets screwed in with pocket hole screws. The other side of the closet, we put together the exact same way for this section. It's really nice having an extra set of hands here to help you hold all the pieces in place while you install the pocket hole screws. And I attach the middle shelf from underneath using pocket hole screws as well. So I got a really tight fit. Uh, the problem is it's really tight at the bottom and at the top, there's probably eight or three sixteenths of an inch on each side. So the walls actually go out like that. So what I'm gonna do is just hammer this thing in place the rest of the way. I've already moved it about that far in about 10 minutes. <laughs> about five minutes smash my finger i'm bleeding mallet and a block of wood to protect the edges knock this thing in place and then i can secure it to the wall once i got it set in place i used two and a half inch screws and screwed it to the wall into a stud that helps hold everything solid you won't have to worry about it falling over later now that we got both sides where we're going to be hanging our clothes it's time to work on the shoe shelves I went back outside and started ripping down plywood these are 15 inches wide so i just made two 15 inch wide rips we're gonna set those in place they screw directly into that wall we just happened to have this wall sticking out for whatever reason they put that in the closet but it did give us a good place to screw into to secure this piece from there you can see me using the viking arm to actually hold this piece up while i glued and brad nailed it in place and that's what it should look like when it's installed now it's time to start making the shells and all the shells will be attached with pocket hole screws as well to keep this build simple. I got a special gift in the mail for Christmas. This is the only, as far as I know, gold Masca pocket hole jig. It's made for me, the pocket hole king. Thank you, Masca. Then I used my sander and 120 grit sandpaper, sanded all the edges as well as all the pocket holes just to clean everything up. Once that's done, I went back inside with all my shelves. I did have some dividers and Miss 731 had specific distances she wanted each shelf. The bottom shelves for taller shoes and boots and then the upper shelves will be shorter so that she can fit her shoes in there. When you get to the upper shelves like this, you'll notice I actually turn over the, the shelf and put the pocket holes facing the top. And the reason for that is it's above eye level. If you were to actually leave them the other way, you would see the pocket holes. However, flipping them over like this hides them. You could always go back and fill these with pocket hole plugs or a 3 8 inch dowel and trim them off flush. 
but we just left them because you can't see them. So next we'll move to my side to make my shoe shelf, or actually mine will be used for boots and jeans. On the bottom, you want to actually add supports for the back and both sides. Your front will be supported by the toe kick. You wanna make sure you leave enough space so that your toe kick can slide in there. And you'll notice here the toe kick actually extends past the end of the shelf. That's gonna go under the bottom of the hanging rack shelf. My first two shelves will be taller so that I can put cowboy boots in there. I like my boots. And so that's where these will be stored. And then from there up, we'll just, they'll be equally spaced so that I can put jeans, shoes, things like that. For the top on the front, we put a piece of three quarter inch strip of plywood. On the right side here, you see me screwing it in from behind with pocket hole screws. On the left, I actually use inch and a quarter screws to screw through both pieces of plywood. That's gonna give your top shelf some support. And speaking of the top shelf, we're gonna install that now. And I just cut it to fit this size. If it wasn't for Miss 731 here, I would have never got this up there. I just could not figure out how to get it. Probably a good thing you're here. I've never figured that out. <laughs> Once that was in place, I used my brad nailer to nail it to the supports as well as the uprights. And then for the top of the shoe shelf, we just used another piece of plywood cut to fit and that's gonna complete the top shelf. For the hanging rod, I just bought this hardware here that fits inch and a quarter dowel, which is an inch and a quarter hanging rack rod. You can find this at pretty much any home store. We cut them to fit and installed them with the splide screws. So day three of this project, actually we've been working half day, so this is about day one and a half, and now we're gonna build this middle section that you see here. The built-in drawers with that nice top. This thing's gonna be fantastic. Let's build that. First thing we gotta do is make the uprights, and they're 15 inches wide as well. So I use my table saw to rip 15 inch wide strips. Ah, I'm in a bind. We were gonna make these a foot taller than the other shelves to give it a little definition in the closet. After that, I ripped down all the material I was gonna need for my drawers. And we're gonna make four drawers for this built-in. If you haven't seen my drawer build video, I have a whole video, I'll link it in the description below, on how my detailed process on how to build drawers. Once they're all cut to length, I break out my Craig setup blocks. I move the blade up to a quarter inch, and then I set the fence also at a quarter inch. Then I start ripping dados using the table saw. And the dado is just a groove in the plywood where the bottom of the drawer, quarter inch plywood, will actually set inside there, like you see here. I'll rip a quarter inch groove, then I'll move the fence over about a blade width, rip another groove, that'll give me a quarter inch. Then for the drawer bottoms, I'm using quarter inch plywood as well. I rip those to size on the table saw. Next, you wanna dry fit everything to make sure everything's gonna work out like you want. If any adjustment needs to be made, this is the time to make it. Next, start assembling drawers. I'm just using glue and brad nails for these drawers. They'll be plenty strong enough. You'll put glue in the dado so that your quarter inch plywood will stick to that. Then you'll also use glue on the sides where they connect. I'm just using an inch and a quarter brad nails to hold them in place while the glue dries. The brad nail gives a little bit of support, but more importantly, the glue is what's gonna hold these drawers together. Well, I got all the drawers made and then I realized that I had built it an inch and a half too wide because I did not account for the two side pieces that are going to slide in there to encase everything. So I've had to tear apart every drawer. Super frustrating, more work. Now it's time to assemble the upright. We're gonna start working on the bottom here and you see me putting in a support on the back of the bottom. Just use a three inch strip of plywood and screwed that in with pocket hole screws. For the front, I just inset it three inches because we're gonna have a similar looking toe kick there. We're also gonna install that with pocket hole screws. Now for the top, I'm using walnut. You don't have to use this. I just had some extra from the last project we made. So I milled this down using my planer then jointed one side on each of these boards and glued them up. <laughs> the glue just poured out of this bottle and I'm in, I've got a mess, but I just rolled with it. And I like to use calls to keep everything nice and flat. The next day after the glue dried, I come out and just cut everything to length. Then I just sanded with 80 grit, then 120 grit, and that's all. Use an eighth inch roundover bit just to soften the edges up just a bit. And now I'm committing the mortal sin. I am pocket holing walnut. <laughs> but I am using a gold pocket hole jig to do it, so that should save me a little bit, right? Let me know in the comments. I put four pocket holes on each side of this. That's how I'm gonna attach it to uprights when we install it. I've got a video on how I finish tabletops. I'll put that in the description as well, so you can check that out if you're interested in a detailed process on how to do this. From there, Rubio Monocoat. It's probably the best finish I've ever used. It's super easy, and it just looks beautiful. Look at that walnut. I mean, it, it just pops. Oh, it's fantastic. Once it's on there for a few minutes, you'll just take a clean terry cloth and buff that off. Buff the wood. Look at that. Mm, look at that midullary raise. That's awesome. While that's drying, I completed the center built-in. I'm just gonna glue and brad nail the top on, 
that'll be plenty strong to hold it in place. For the other shells, we're just doing pocket hole screws again. This one will be at an eye level that's below what if you were just standing up, so that's why you see the pocket holes toward the bottom. The one above it will turn it over so that the pocket holes are pointing toward the top. All right, so the reason we built most of that stuff in place in the closet was because we couldn't get in there with it assembled because of the tight space that we're in. Now this is eight foot long, but it's only 15 inches wide, so we'll be able to get it through the door, except we forgot that we have to turn going into our bedroom from the hallway. It's a sharp left turn. There's no way to get this in there. I think we're gonna have to go through the window. <laughs> the bedroom window to get it actually in the house. Fingers crossed. I thought this was gonna be more challenging than it was, but it actually went in really easy. And then we was able to manipulate it into the closet and then it just slid right in place. It's like I planned it that way. <laughs> For all the plywood edges, we're using edge banding to cover that up. It's just a veneer with glue on one side, as you see here, but it has to be heated to stick. Miss 731 used an iron and ironed it on. It works fantastic. Now, a lot of times it's a little bit wider than your plywood. They make a tool to trim this up, which we later bought. I'll put that in the description below as well. But it really makes or breaks your finished product. It makes it look more professional and more finished. Now it's time to install these drawers. Uh, again, in the drawer build video, I'll show you how to install them as well. It's really simple actually, and it goes pretty quick. I always make sure my drawer slides are even. That way when they set inside your cabinet, they'll be setting flat or level. It's also a good idea to use spacers here. That way everything gets spaced nice and equally. For the drawer fronts, we're just using plywood again. And I just spaced these out, put clamps on there, and then screwed them in from the back with inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. Now for the drawer pulls, they're solid brass barn door pulls. Miss 731 saw them, she knew that this would complete the look and it looks fantastic. For the walnut top, we're pocket hole screwing it in. I know you guys are probably flipping out right now, but this looks fantastic, I'm telling you. It's gonna be fine, I promise. That is fantastic and a dramatic difference from where we were at. It's a small closet as walk-in closets go, but this gives us so much more room. We're not done yet. So for some finishing touches on the closet, Miss 731 has some decorations. This is gold, it's gonna match those drawer pulls. And then we also needed a new light. This, did, this thing was just terrible. It didn't put out much light. It was old, it was crusty, so I took that down. Be sure and turn the power off at the breaker before messing with this stuff or hire a professional. Now we're gonna pack our shoes and all of our stuff in this closet to see if it makes a difference on where we were before to where we are now. Also on the rod where you hang your clothes, I did add a support because when we started hanging clothes, I noticed it was bowing just a little. So this is just a piece of maple pocket old into the shelf above. That light, there it is. It's also brass or brass colored and it just looks cool. We wanted a new floor because this floor here was linoleum or vinyl stuff that was here when we bought the house almost 15 years ago. So it needed updating pretty bad. So we had tile laid, this gray tile Miss 731 picked out with a gray grout. And I think it really finished off the look. I said we did this on a budget, and so a lot of people have probably already commented that it was not a budget because the plywood's high, but it was eight sheets of plywood is what we used, and so eight sheets of plywood at $65 brings us to about $520 or so, and then you add in the other items. We did buy a new light fixture for in here. We also bought these solid brass handles, which were quite expensive, but we really liked them. I had the walnut left over, I'd already paid for it, so I guess you could add that in there. And then we did the edge banding, pocket hole screws, and just little odds and ends. Our budget was $800 and we did go over that because of the drawer handles, but I think it was well worth it because it really finished off the look. If you like this project, click that box right there to another DIY project you're gonna love. Click that box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Also another one of my favorite videos, right there.